This past September, Stats Canada released its results from its 2012 family census. With me is Dr. Marianne Murphy. She's an associate professor in the Department of Sociology here at UBC. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, you're often called upon to comment on census results. What did you notice this year? Well, as always, we have a very dynamic Canadian family, but in this census, we're adding to the Canadian mosaic by noticing some different family forms and some very interesting living arrangements. And what does that look like? Well, uh, for the first time this year, we counted stepchildren and foster children, but in addition to that, we're seeing a fairly uh, large growth in a number of different family types, including father-headed lone parent families, as one example. What was significant um, about those arrangements? Was there anything that the um, census really pulled out in those dynamics? Well, what most stands out for me in this release of census data is really a story of singlehood. Both a lot of young adults, ages 20 to 29, staying at home for a very long time, and also on the other end of the age spectrum, one in four Canadian adults living alone over the age of 65, primarily women. Now, what does it mean that children are staying at home a little bit longer. What, what you said in their early 20s, are they, how long are they staying at home? Well, true to the title of the well-known film, Failure to Launch, oh. we really have a large Canadian story about failure to launch. Uh, on average, about 50% of Canadian youth are not leaving home, and that number actually rises in the large Canadian cities. Happens to be, uh, interestingly, the highest in the 905 region of Toronto, which is a very culturally diverse neighborhood where you can see up to 70 and 75 percent of 20 to 29 mm -hmm. somethings still living at home with mom and dad. Why do you suppose they're doing that? It's, it, it's quite strange that people wouldn't want to leave home as soon as they can get that opportunity. Well, the answer is a little bit sociologically complex. <laughs> okay. I teach an intergenerational classroom here at UBC, and we've had both young and old talking about the interesting features of staying at home for longer. One is obviously the story of the economy. Mm. Another is a story of youth unemployment that is double that for the average adult in Canada. But we also have a number of young students who are financially very literate and claim that they've been taking financial courses in high school. So they're very concerned about rising rents. They're very aware about the folly of spending a lot of money on rent during university and leaving with nothing to show for it. And they're very concerned about being able to save for a future, which in their minds includes the ability to buy a home. So when the average student is coming out of university somewhere between twenty and thirty thousand dollars in debt, they're highly aware that it might be very astute on their parts to live with mom and dad. Has that affected the family dynamics at all? At all? Did the census identify any of that? Well, it has affected some very interesting dynamics. Uh, one of which is the Brits have come up with a new moniker, which is called the Kippers. And those who are kids who are still in parents' pockets eroding their retirement <laughs> savings. Oh no, that's true. It is true. That's true then. A recent TD Canada survey indicated that about 17% of boomers are now unable to sell the family home as planned because the mm. children are still living in the basement or living upstairs. But what we'd like to know a little more about sociologically about these arrangements are really about how the household chores are shared. Mm. Are these children still living as if they were 15 years old? Are they contributing to the family? Uh, certainly there are cultural aspects. Certain cultures such as South Asian families tend to not want to ask their children for rent, whereas perhaps others do. So there are a lot of interesting questions about how those arrangements work. And we know that, uh, particularly on the side of mothers, mothers tend to be, in general, quite happy with those arrangements. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. So people don't, mothers really don't want their kids to leave the nest. Is that really what it no, boils down to? No, as long as they can work out a few important points. But on the flip side of that, how does that affect um, seniors and, and the situation that they're in? Um, in regards to the census again? With respect to older adults, when you have one in four living alone, it raises all kinds of interesting questions, again, especially because they're female, about possible co-housing arrangements for the future. And when mm -hmm. you look at the kind of housing stock that we've built here in the Okanagan, 
very large homes. We haven't built a lot of housing stock for individuals. Mm -hmm. The other day I heard a story about a new apartment being marketed in Vancouver that's less than 300 square feet. Wow. But when you look at the mass of housing here, it raises interesting questions about stairs, accessibility, mm -hmm. adaptability of housing, and then legally and socially, if people choose to co-reside in the future, how will we establish those kinds of arrangements? So it wouldn't be an official care home or residence, it would just simply be friends wanting to live together for convenience mm -hmm. and comfort. And especially if they've got a large home, why not share it? That's right. So it looks like we might have some new trends in the future. Yes. If I could go back to the youth for a minute, there's another very interesting trend, which is really that we see uh, adulthood being not just delayed, delayed but elongated. Mm. So we have youth who are staying at home longer and leaving school later and that starts off a very interesting cycle of delaying every subsequent decision in their lives. Mating, marrying, mm. having children, not until a first average age of 32 now in wow. Canada. And in fact that put, puts them about a full five years behind their high school or university counterparts in the 1980s. Wow. Wow. Well, that sounds like there's a trend and that might be the next big thing we're going to see is later families, kids, they're not leaving home. Um, we might have to revisit how we do our, our social life now with the change of, of family dynamics. Possibly. And it's quite possible that one of the reasons that we're delaying adulthood uh, so much is because we're taking so much longer in which to grow old. So perhaps we feel we have the luxury mm. and the luxury of history to have that time and possibility to remain at home. Well, maybe that's good news. Hopefully. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again soon. You'll come visit us? I'd love to. Excellent. Thank you.